So our last uh, question that we just demonstrate, that was what we considered a good equation. Why was it a good equation? Because the original problem had it equal zero. Now notice these two equations, there's no zero here. Okay, both sides have some type of number and variable. So these are examples of something that if you have bad equations. Now why these bad equations? Because again, I don't see an equal zero on any side. So our first step to solving was always determine good or bad. We know ours is bad because it does not equal a zero. So we do have to do step two. We are going to see if there's any parentheses that we have to distribute. No. Then we're going to see how to move the term over. Now I'm going to move the 30x over. Some people might say, well, why don't you move the 5x squared over? It's because I like to keep my highest degree positive. It makes it easier for me. So I just want to move the 30x over. How do we move the 30x over? You remember, you have a left-hand side and a right-hand side. If I want to move this 30x to this side, then you have to do the additive inverse opposite sign. So since this is positive, the opposite would be a negative. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other side. These are additive inverses, so they cancel out to be, there's your zero. Be careful here. We talked about this before. Something that's an x squared, something that's a plain x, they're not like terms. Like terms have to have the same exponent. Not just the same letters, but the same exponents. Since one's a squared and one's not, you're going to keep them separate. Put this first, highest degree, and then this. The reason why we put it in this order is because, remember, we told you, make sure terms are in descending order. That means you want your highest degree down to the constant. So now that it is good, what we're going to do, this has nothing to factor out. This is my term side. The term side, let's factor out that completely. So ignore the equal zero and notice we have 5x squared minus 30x. How do you do any type of factoring? Again, look to see if there's a GCF. Since this is two terms, don't go right into difference of squares. Say to yourself, whoa, they both have an x in common, and they both have a hidden 5, because remember, 30 is 2 times 3 times 5. So we're going to take out what we call the GCF. Remember, we always look for that first. So we're going to divide each term by 5x. So my leftovers is going to be just x, remember, 2 versus 1, and here, well, there's a tie for x's, so no more x's, but negative 30 divided by positive 5 is negative 6. We're done factoring, because the next step would be count how many terms are left over. Notice it's two terms, but it doesn't fit the definition of difference of squares. Yes, you have a minus sign, but 6, remember from the other day, is not a perfect square, and x is not a perfect square. So we are going to leave this as factored completely. So once you factor completely, then that's where we take each of those terms, the GCF and the binomial, the set of parentheses. So take the 5x, set it equal to 0, that's the GCF. Since it has a ladder, solve for it. Divide each side by 5. You know that 0 divided by 5 is 0. And then take the other factor, which happens to be the binomial. Set that equal to 0. We know we got to move the 6 over. Why do I need to move the 6 over? Remember back in the day where we talked about variables on one side, constants on the other. This 6 is a constant, so we got to move it. Opposite of a negative would be a positive. Whatever I do to the left, you have to do to the right. They cancel out, so we get x equals 6. Remember, because our original problem had a squared, I don't want to see this as my answer. I want to see x equals 0 and x equals 6. That's my answer. When you do solving equations by factoring, 
your answers are not going to be parentheses. They're going to be letter equals whatever number. X equals zero in our case and X equals six. Okay. Let's do this other one that's up here as well. Notice doesn't equal zero. So we already know this is bad. When it's bad, we have to make good. To make good, we're going to see if there's any parentheses. No. Then we're going to move. And of course, I want to keep this positive. The higher exponent, keep the coefficient positive so it's easier to move the 9w over. So subtract 9w on both sides. These are additive inverses. So of course, they're going to be 0. This and this. Remember, not like terms. They're both W's, yes, but they both don't have a cubed as an exponent. Three versus one, then they're not like terms. Put them in order, highest degree first, then the minus nine W. Now notice we got it good because it equals zero. So once it's good, then I told you, focus on just the term sign the side that has all the numbers and letters. Ignore the equals zero part. We're going to have to factor completely, step three. So again, see if there's a GCF. Hmm, I can take out a W. They both have a letter in common. They don't have anything else in common. Remember, no matching parentheses. This guy doesn't have a number, and this doesn't start with a negative. So the only thing I'll take out is the W. When I take out the W, remember you divide each term by W, you can find your leftovers so they're going to be W squared. 3 versus 1, 2 is left over. And then here and here cancel out to be a minus 9. Now, this can be factored out more. You might be saying, what's the difference between this and then the guy that we just did? Notice my leftovers is still two terms, which is a binomial. To factor out two terms, you have to see, does it meet the definition of difference of squares? Do we have a minus sign? Yes. But we also have a perfect square and a perfect square. Unlike here, this wasn't a perfect square. This wasn't a perfect square. We couldn't factor this any further. This meets the two conditions, minus sign, perfect square, perfect square. Remember, we're ignoring the GCF. So this can be broken down as difference of squares. This is what you learned in 6.5. Set up 1 plus 1 minus. Then once you know it met the definition, you did the setup. Step 3 was break this down. W squared is W and W. Always break it down evenly. The roots. And then 9, break that down evenly. Square root would be 3 and 3. Bring down the GCF so that you're done factoring. But that's not your final answer. Remember, you still have to do step four here. A lot of students forget that after they're done factoring completely, they have to take the GCF, which is the W, set that equal to zero. Notice we have a letter here, but there's nothing to move or anything else, so there's one answer. Take w plus 3, set that equal to 0. Remember, we want to get the variable by itself, so don't keep it at w plus 3. Remember, we'll have to move the 3 over to get w by itself. So we'll get w equals negative 3. And then that would be your second answer. And then take this other binomial, w minus 3, and set it equal to 0. And then you know you're going to move the 3 over by doing additive inverse. So we get w equals positive 3. And you might be saying, well, that's a lot of answers. There's one here, one here, and one here. Well, remember, our original problem had an exponent of 3. That tells me we can have three answers. Answer 1, answer 2, answer 3. So make sure you see that this three answers... Well, this one squared, only two answers. Okay? So that was your trick.